Are you guys ready to do an analysis on Bitcoin Cash today? Bitcoin Cash, the kind of coin I used to think was trash. It went up so high to the skies, but like my old relationship, it ended in a flash. The great hammer of Thor did its mighty smash down to the ground, to the pavement it found. I'm sure some people bought at the very top. Now all they're left with is a diaper rash. Quick side note, it's Movember. Sucks to be Asian. I wish I could grow a mustache. For days in consolidation, all that it did was thrash. But what smart people did was start accumulating and put it into their stash. Now, it's done with its hot flash, ready to unlash, not even batting an eyelash, ready to make a great big splash. Drop the mic! Now, now, everybody, calm down. You know, I don't appreciate that level of enthusiasm, okay? So before we get started, I just want you guys to see what is up on my account here as well. So I just bought five Bitcoin cash. I'm playing a relatively small position. Nothing really too big at all. So what kind of my position am I playing? You guys can see me do technical analysis while also, while also live trading sometimes. It's just what I will do. So I'm in an $8,400 position right now. And I, I allocate myself about 20 grand, you can say, for my margin account that I play with. So I have another like eleven, twelve thousand dollars $12,000 that I can play with here. Really low chance of me getting liquidated. Don't you guys ever worry about that, okay? My liquidation price here is 757, so not a worry. We're already upticking right here, right? I set my stop really quickly at 80. If I actually sell that, I'll make myself a really, really quick $50, guys. Super quick $50. So I bought five there at 16.69 here. If I sold this at 180, sorry, 16.80. And this is what I do, guys, just to give you an introduction of what I do in terms of scalping, right? So I'm a, I'm a scalper and what that means is I take advantage of volatility and oversold and, and extremely overbought conditions, right? And I will take the very, very small profits and play the bounces as many as I can. And the reason I can do this is because my volume every month, it exceeds a certain threshold. And this threshold gives me a 0% uh, fee for a maker fee, right? So the taker fee, I think is like 0.16%, but for my actual fee is, is literally 0%. So I can scalp for days, right? So you guys are gonna see this uptick quite a bit already. Like some, my, someone's just gonna gobble up my order. You'll see in a second, you guys will see me make, I don't know, re really easy money. In just a few seconds, this will change very quickly here. So I, I take a lot of positions. Sometimes I'm making like, like you see on my Twitter, right? Sometimes I'm making like 20, 30, 40 plays a day that are ranging from 30 to $50 in profit. And they can absolutely add up sometimes, right? So here it looks like it's about to go up already. It leveled out already on the bottom there. It's probably going to shoot for this 55 EMA, I'm guessing. Don't worry, I'll get into the technical analysis. I just want to give you guys a little bit of uh, my live trading as well, right? So what did I do? How did I get into such a good position? You guys are probably wondering, right? So we, after we confirm the Elliott wave count, what we do is we just take our Fibonacci retracement tool from the beginning to the very end. And what we see is it's actually bouncing right now, right off of the, like I'm sure it's bouncing off of the 55 EMA on the five minute chart, actually barely, barely. It's about to bounce off of the, like right here, the 55, sorry, the 0.5 Fibonacci level. So yeah, so these guys are buying and they're buying pretty hard right now, if you guys notice, right? So they're buying really, really hard right now. Not really a lot of volume, but it could be because people are cautious about their, um, about this Fibonacci level, the 0.5 Fibonacci level, and people could be just closing their shorts and just taking their profit, right? So just from my Excel sheet here, for example, if I sold 1680, I'd make I make um, a decent amount already, so I'm just going to take my quick profit there. It's at 36 already. See, see that there? So 6, uh, 79, whatever. Not too picky about a dollar or two, guys. So I think people are going to buy now. Come on. 39. Just need a few more people to buy. $39, 36. Come on. So I take many, many positions and you guys might have seen on my Twitter, like how many positions I take a day, right? It can get kind of crazy sometimes. So there we go. Someone's just gobbling them up. There's not really that big of a difference here. 
and my position should close in just a few seconds here when people realize that it's, they're going to buy it up. It hasn't exactly reached the resistance point around 60 yet. This is a resistance point right here, I would call it 62, so it still has got some ways to go there. The volume is slowly declining right now, but that's okay. Someone's buying right now, they're upticking a little bit. More people are buying, right? And I don't want to be in front of that guy, so I'm just going to cut him off. Go to 8.9 right here, so the next 6 or 7. There we go, I'm the next guy in line, I've got 5. Somebody just undercut me, he's getting a little bit desperate to sell, I think. I know it doesn't seem like much, right? It's only like a $9, cent, $9 spread, right? There we go. I just made a really, really easy 40 something dollars in front of you guys there. Anyways, I am done making money. Just to give you guys an idea of how easy it is to make money trading, guys. It is such an easy thing to do. Because when we look for indic when we use our indicators and we use confluence, right? With all the indicators and what we know, we have an arsenal of weapons that we can deploy. So people might laugh at me and they're like, oh, 40%, 40 dollar gains, you know, or oh, 0.5% gains. Well, guess what, guys? I've got no fees. I've got no fees, so I can really take advantage of that. And when you take 40 to 100 dollar gains, right, per trade, multiply that by a lot of times, as you guys might have seen me post on Twitter, it can really add up. But what I'm getting to is it's really important to develop your own style of trading, if that makes sense, okay? You, as scalp, as attractive as scalping looks, it might not be for everyone because, you know, it's like a sport, right? Some people highly excel in other sports. Some people are better in other sports, right? So we always have to develop our own style. So guys, get into this technical analysis and where we are, okay? I don't want to take up your time too much today. So this is big wave one, that is big wave two. Right, this is basically subwave one that we've started here. Right here, that's two there, that's three. This is basically four down, where, down somewhere here right now, okay? Four, I'm not gonna call this as it right here, A, B, C, D, and E. And we're still about to make like a, a pretty, pretty big wave, I think. Like the last wave will be fairly big so let's try to get a gauge of where these targets could possibly be, okay? Let's delete all these FIB extensions. I want to first of all find out exactly how far this one moved up. So we're going to use our FIB extension tool right here. So this one actually surpassed it a little bit. It surpassed the one-to-one, -one, right? It surpassed the one-to-one -one that we know right here. We're just going to a little gauge of it. Just slightly, slightly, like to the quarter section of the one-to-one. -one. And because it made a quarter section of it, what we're gonna assume is the exact same thing, actually. We're gonna assume it's gonna hit the quarter section down over here of the next level. And that's really easy to assume already, right? So let's also use another baseline where we take our Fibonacci extension here, and we'll assume a one-to-one. -one. So if I took a quarter of it just down to over here, right, a quarter of that, and this was a one-to-one, -one, there, that's now my target range. My target range is actually 1950. It's pretty realistic. 1950 to about 2150, we'll say. It's a pretty big range, right, this box. But what we want to do is we want to take the minimum and we want to take the maximum. So before, guys, um, if you guys noticed my prediction that I made, just take a look here, okay? For Bitcoin Cash, no, not EOS. EOS, if you guys got in on that, it completely overshot my target there. Right, I suggested a buy-in around 195. It, it went to 195, or actually like 197-ish. And anybody who bought in around the zone, guys, like for EOS, it went up. My target was only 220. It went up to 260, guys. It made an extended fifth wave, which was beautiful. So anybody who got on EOS today, wow. I woke up in the middle of the night and all I heard was, ah, yeah, yeah. That's the sound of my Bitcoin checker app. Um, it makes like a you know a cheering sound whenever it reaches its price target. I bought at 195, right? And um, when it reached like 205, it made that sound, right? And I was I woke up and I'm like, whoa! I just made like, I just made like a thousand dollars during my sleep. So I was super happy about that, right? Then I just went back to bed. 
And then I woke up this morning again, and I and I saw it at 260. I was like, wow! I put a limit at 195, hoping it would retrace back a little bit. And when I woke up, it was at $2.60. So I was really blown away there. So Bitcoin Cash, where is it? Right here. I suggested a buy zone for you guys between 1440 and 1550. So remember that 1440 and 1550. Here, my target's still roughly the same, 2000 to 1870. But now my target's going to change a little bit. It's going to be, it's actually going to be um, a little bit, you know what, I want to keep it the same. I want to go with 1900 just to be conservative. It's a pretty big target, pretty big target. I don't think we're going to hit it, to be honest, the second target, but you never know. It's a possibility, but not. But it's not likely, just put it that way. So I've got a little bit too much clutter here on the screen, 161.8. Yeah, I want to keep it at 1900, target one, target two is 2150 right here. So I'm not going to get into all the Elliott Wave counts with you guys, but what you can notice here, this was my suggested buy zone, right? Between 14, right here, 1440, around there, 1440 and 1550-ish, something like that. Or 1400, I don't remember what it was, I think it was 1450 or so. So there was a really good buy zone, and how did I know it was going to be a buy zone, guys? Let me show you. So I took my FIB extension of this first wave right here and realized that it only retraced 3A2. And because it only retraced 3A2, I'll automatically assume that this one might retrace around 0.5 or maybe a little bit more, right? Just a tiny bit more maybe, right? So what I automatically assumed was that one retraced about 3A2, so this one will retrace a little bit more. But the cool thing about this one is it's not going to retrace after the territory of wave one. So this is kind of the limit that it could have retraced to. And because this one was fairly bullish, right, I would assume anywhere between 382 and 0.5. And surely enough, that's exactly what it did. So that was a really good buy zone. That's actually where I got mine filled as well. Actually, I got mine filled like around 15, 60, 70. So that's exactly where I ended up going through for mine. So for the first motive wave up, right, there's always a lot of volume. Some people might argue, hey, this is the first wave going up there. But I wouldn't call it the first wave because... If you guys look on here, for example, right, the first wave we peaked really high for the RSI, second wave we picked, or third wave we peaked even higher, and the third, or the fifth wave it peaked really high as well, right? And this it hit formed an A, B, C, D, E kind of correction. So watch this. A, B, C, D, and E. So A, B, C, D, and E right here. So this spike right here, I actually don't call that as my first motive wave up at all. So what I would actually call this right here, let me show you guys. Actually, yeah, we can call it that. That's fine. We can call this one wave one here, wave two, wave three, wave four, and wave five, okay? So we're actually finishing up only the first sub wave at the beginning. That's it, the first sub wave of the beginning. So there's actually five waves in here all together. And let me show you guys how it's counted, okay? So this would be like that. One, two, and we clearly found some support there, right? Three. So this would be probably a bigger wave there. And the fifth wave will probably end up somewhere, somewhere in there in that zone, see? So just to give you guys an idea of what I'm talking about here, we've got five major waves up there. And the ones that we have just completed is actually this one right here. We've just completed this one right here that I will make yellow for you, okay? Like that. So we finished one, two, three, four, five, right? Just like that. This one we traced how much? Actually, 0.5, my mistake. This one we traced, yeah, that makes a lot of sense as well. Yep, okay, watch this, guys. This one here didn't retrace a lot, or sorry, it did to about 0.5, almost 0.6. So we can automatically assume that this wave coming down would only retrace about 382. And surely enough, it did, right? That's pretty, pretty amazing. So now what we're trying to wait for is we're trying to see how much this one right here retraced. Well, that one went up a lot. I lost on a lot of money, actually. I could have made another 60, 70 dollars, but whatever. I find trades all the time. So what we're trying to do now is find out exactly how much this wave is going to retrace based on the all of them. So to give you guys an example, okay, just lesson time right now. What a lot of people do is they take the Fibonacci from this wave right there, which is right 
and then they take the Fibonacci from wave 3, which is also right, and then they take the Fibonacci of wave 5, which is wrong, like that. This wave 5's Fibonacci is actually the entire length from wave 1 to 5, like that, okay? So make sure you guys aren't making that mistake. After you do a 5 wave count there, if you're doing Fibonacci from here, then you're trying to set a buy zone for the 618 level there, you're going to get screwed up. So make sure you're using Fibonacci after all five wave counts, okay? After all five wave counts, you do from the beginning of wave one to the end of wave two. And this right here would be a really good buy zone in general. Um, I'm trying to find my box here. Basically, anywhere in here is a good buy zone. You just got to see where it leveled off. And the reason why I made that little trade in front of you guys was because of this right here. Watch, okay? Let's see, it's about to peak at the 0.5. And that's why I bought it around there, and I got in at a, actually at a really, really good price. I still expect to make it, make a few more touches. We don't really know where this one is going to be, guys, to be quite honest. We have no idea, okay? But what we do know is that that is the structure right now that we see, okay? That is absolutely the structure that we see, and I'm actually going to make a, a call for this one as well. I'm gonna, it's pretty hard to predict, um, predict this specific wave, right? But I will actually make a call for it. I'm going to make a call anywhere between 1681. Actually, no, I'm going to go lower. I'm going to go freaking to right even here, okay? I'm going to choose a round number, 1675, we'll say. Nah, we'll go 1660 ish. 1670 to 1625, we'll say. So it's, it can be very arbitrary, right? So what I'll do is I'll extrapolate this. I'll just extrapolate the line. And where does it look like it's going to bounce off, guys? Right? So for example, here, we extrapolate the line there. And we just get an idea of where it could have bounced off. Extrapolate the line. Get an idea of where it could almost get to it, right? So from here, just assuming that it doesn't really come close to it because this one didn't really bounce off of it. This one didn't bounce off of it as well. Right? On the first wave here, it bounced off of it, but this one it didn't. So that's actually three for four times. It didn't even bounce off of it or touch it. So I'm, I'm going to have to assume that the buy zone will actually be somewhere in here. This one's going to be more bullish. I'm going to say now between 1550 and 16... Actually, I'll go a little bit lower just to be conservative. 1440 to even 1675. So what you, got, what you guys need to remember is that these buy zones, you're not always going to get the absolute best price, guys. Like, you're not going to get the absolute best price every single time, okay? These buy zones are general targets, just general targets based on extrapolation and extensions, right? But what we do need to understand is that there's a long ways to go. This is the one that we want to catch. We don't know how long it's going to be, right? For example, these ones over here, over 30 minutes, or sorry, how many days did it take? Let's take a look. This one here, after it finished, you know, for consolidation wise, took about 10 hours. This one's probably just as long, or less, I mean, six hours, right? This one here, this one here lasted nine hours, right? This one here was probably really, really short because the third waves is usually very short. That one's like one hour. So we can expect anywhere between one to 10 hours. Or sorry, um, not one to 10 hours, three to 10 hours total. So we'll give it to right about there. That looks pretty good to me. I'm gonna expect the bounce, say right off of the 5, 0.5 Fibonacci level. Yeah, that sounds about good. 0.5 Fibonacci level there. Yep, this looks pretty good to me. And now you guys have basically two targets, right? Like your one target is I'm going to shoot low for this one right there. I'm going to use Fibonacci extension as well to see where that one can get to next. Perfect. So this one will be about 1875, I'll say. Actually, 1880. 1888. Now, I like round numbers, 1885. And the next one, I will shoot for a 1618 extension, assuming that it hits the 0.5 Fibonacci level. Boom. That pits it right here. I'm going to lower my zone, actually. I don't think it's going to make that extension. I'm going to lower it to 
like 2050 is target two. So what we have to remember is that targets can often fall short, guys, right? Targets can often fall short very, very often, right? So we have to make sure we're watching our indicators all the time. So this will be target one. That'll be basically target two. So there you guys have it. Good buy zone, which I'm just going to write out because I don't really have a lot of time right now to go into. Actually, yeah, I'll write it down for you guys. Give me a second. I'll be right back. All right, so here we go, guys. So this is a little bit harder to predict because we're trying to catch sub waves, right? And whenever we try to catch sub waves, they're a lot harder. Catching these big waves, they're very easy to predict. But catching an actual sub wave within a big wave, that's a little bit harder and requires precise timing. So we're going to make a lot of assumptions, okay? We're going to assume, first of all, that this one here could hit a possible target of 161.8. Fib extension. So we're going to assume the entire Fib extension length right here. This one here, it beat it by a tiny bit. I'm actually going to correct this, put it to the left there. So this one beat this one by a tiny bit. So it's actually possible that this one will actually be, get to it as well, around 2040-ish. So this one, or 2025, we'll say. Actually, this one, yeah, we'll say 2040. And we have two setups, okay? And we're gonna assume subwaves three and five, assuming one-to-one -one extensions for all of these ones right here, okay? So one, two, three, four, five, these will all assume to be the same extension. I'm gonna delete that as well for you guys. So we're currently on the second wave coming down. We're about to do the third wave up, four down, and five up like that, okay? And now this is assuming a bullish zone as well between 382 fib and 0.5, all right? So you guys can take a look at that as well. Now there's a conservative long and there's an aggressive long. The conservative one is has um slightly better risk to reward, right? It's not as not as um slightly better, but it's it's just tighter in general with less profit, right? So this one's a 4.29. So 4.29. I actually need to move this over a little bit. There we go. 4.29. Entries between 1640 and 1680. So I, I, I'm going to guess we're going to, we might not even get to this buy zone, right? This is just assuming a bullish behavior. We might only see 382 fib. So you guys have to take that in mind, right? So I'm actually going to increase the range even to like 1690 um, extreme end. Actually, no, 1680, you guys have to watch out for this yourselves, okay? So yeah, actually. Now I'm going to go 80, 1680, yeah. So then my target is 186, uh, 18618, and this target is derived from this extension right here, right there. Just a little bit more than that, 18618, okay? So that's where the first target is going to be about, right around here. So 1868, stop loss is fairly low. I want to keep the stop loss tight under 1600. Probability pretty high, chance to gain about 13.25%, chance to lose about 3%. Time frame, I'd say about two to five days. And there's the aggressive long. The aggressive long is way more aggressive. 3.8 risk to reward ratio. Your target's about the same price for entry, except now you're shooting for a target two, right? I'm gonna write this one in, in as target two. And you're shooting for basically the fifth wave up there. You're not doing any type of ladder buys. This one here is 2040 is your target, which is fairly achievable in my opinion, but not not too likely, right? Not too likely. I might even just shoot for like say 2000 right here. Just uh, yeah, I want to shoot for 2000. So this is now 3.45 the risk to reward. So it's actually a little bit lower now. 3.45. Chance to gain is lower, 21.13, 1.13. This one, well, you got a chance to lose more. You're gonna actually take a tighter, a, a wider range for stop loss, right where to the original point ended pretty much, because this wave cannot retrace all the way back down to there. Now you got a chance to lose 6.18%. Okay, does that make sense so far, guys? Awesome, so I'm gonna actually post this chart uh, good luck with it if you guys catch the sub wave, right? We still got a, quite a ways to go here. This is a possible target, not too 100% likely, but you know, it's it's definitely possible, guys. Like it's just a matter of waiting. 
I, I don't think it's we're actually going to achieve target two up there, but it's possible once again. Okay, so make sure you guys are always watching your indicators. You don't just set a stop in there and be like, okay, I'm just going to leave. You guys have seen some of my videos where I'm also, um, you know, managing my positions. I'm managing my risk as well. That's something I would highly recommend for you guys to absolutely do as well. So good luck with it if you enter the trade there. We got a little bit of a ways to go. And after we do that, we're going to do a big correction, guys. We're going to do a massive correction from, like, I'm guessing if we reach the target, we're going to correct all the way down to 1,555. So that'll be a nice short-term target as well. And, you know, I'm going to increase my buy zone to 90. Watch carefully. I'm going to write here, watch 1690 carefully. May go lower. They go much lower. That's what I'm going to just write in here. I just want to be very clear. Okay, so we're getting a buy range. So if you guys are actually going into this, right, like, you know, don't don't panic, right? If you're buying at 1690 and it actually goes lower, well, I'm sorry to say, guys, but that's your fault for not monitoring it. Okay, I'm giving you guys a, a very rough range of where it could possibly go. Okay, it's not my job to make sure you guys get the absolute best price. Okay, these are the targets based on all Fibonacci extensions and based on my technical analysis. So if you guys like this, please upvote, please share, please subscribe. You guys know the whole nine yards and my dog sends her love, Luna. She's not here with me at the moment. So if you guys absolutely loved it, I also carry a cryptocurrency piggy bank just for Luna that thank you very much for all the people that I've been donating. Um, please don't ever feel obligated to donate, right? The only reason I have it there is because a lot of people have asked me to keep my address on there. And to some people, it makes them feel really good to help out the community in this way. So other than that, have yourselves a phenomenal night guys and may the odds be forever in your favor take it easy guys